Hi, in this tutorial, we will learn how to compute portfolio risk and portfolio return in Excel. We will use two different methods. The first method will uh, focus on the variance covariance matrix to compute portfolio risk. Whereas the second method will be a bit of a shortcut and we'll do the calculations a bit faster. Uh, we will use three stocks to um, compute a portfolio or to construct a portfolio. And we will make the spreadsheet available to you. So if you go to the video description, you will find a link where you can download this Excel template in case you are interested. Okay, let's get started. So the So the first thing we would like to do is to specify some investment rates. Okay? So this is all about how we would like to split our funds across the, these three. And the three stocks I've chosen uh, for this tutorial are Tesla, Amazon, and Netflix. Okay? You can add more stocks or do you use different stocks, it doesn't matter. And I'll focus on a five-year period with uh, monthly returns to make our calculations. But again, the method we employ here applies to any return frequency and any sample length. Okay. Now, let's say we would like to compute an equally weighted portfolio, which means that I will split my funds equally across these three assets. And we can change this later on. It doesn't really matter. Let's say I put a third of my money in Tesla and a third of my money in Amazon. And the remaining part, so basically one minus this, this one, which is of course a one third as well, into Netflix. So these are my investment rates. Let's begin with computing the average return of each stock uh, during this uh, five year period, because that will help us to compute the realized portfolio return. So let's begin with Tesla. So all I want to do is to take the average return for Tesla. Here we are. So for Tesla, it was 6.78%. So I'm just gonna extend this over here. So for Amazon, it was 1.04%. And for Netflix, it was 0.94%. Okay, so clearly Tesla did a lot better over this period uh, across these three stocks. So I can quickly right away cal calculate my portfolio return. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Portfolio risk will take a little longer, but not too difficult either. First of all, I can verify that portfolio weights add up to one. It's always useful to check, and that is the case. And then portfolio return is simply a weighted average of these returns, and the weights are here investment weights. So I can use Excel's sum product function to do that. So I will select this as my first array, the investment weight, and returns as the second array. And here we are. So let's format this a bit nicely so that we can read it easier. So the return of the equally weighted portfolio was uh, about a, li a little less than 3% of this period. If we put, for example, more weight on Tesla, let's say if we raise it to 25, then Netflix share would uh, go down and the portfolio return would change. Okay, But let's stick to the equal weights portfolio for our example. Now, the next thing to do is, of course, to compute portfolio risk. Okay, so Let's focus on that. So I'm going to form what is called a very, oops, do that going to use what's called a variance covariance matrix. Okay, so I'm going to put the figures in here. So, so far we have computed portfolio return. Okay, so that's 2.2%. And let's do, let's now compute portfolio risk. So let's begin with variance covariance matrix. So for this matrix on the diagonal, I will have the variance of uh, returns for each stock. Okay, so I'm going to use var dot s function. So there are two functions here. So there's var p and var s. For large samples, it really won't matter which one to use. One is the population variance, 
So the when when computation is made, it divides by n. Whereas with uh, sample variance, it divides by n minus one because it makes it an unbiased estimator. Okay. Again, like I said, if you have a large number of observations, this will have little practical uh, difference. Let's use the YS function. So again, I would like to start with Tesla. This is the variance of Tesla returns. Okay. Then I would like to compute the covariance, okay? And again, there's covariance P, covariance S function. Again, let's stick to covariance S, but like I said, for large samples, it really doesn't matter. So I would like to compute the covariance between Tesla returns. And I would like to fix this because I will then um, extend it to the next cell as well. So I use F4 to fix the cells then choose Amazon returns. So this is the covariance between Tesla and Amazon returns. So now if I pull this over here, it should give me the covariance between Tesla and Netflix returns. Perfect, just what I need. Okay, so this is the first row. Now let's move on to the second row. I don't really need to compute the cell because actually this is exactly the same as this. Covariance between Tesla and Amazon is the same as the covariance between Amazon and Tesla. So I'll straight away jump to the variance of Amazon returns. So all I need to do is select the returns from this column. And here we are. And then I need to compute the covariance between Amazon and Netflix returns. So covariance function is needed here. Select Amazon returns, then also select Netflix returns, right? Here we are, that's done as well. And the last thing I need is the variance of Netflix returns. Okay, easy peasy. Variance of Netflix returns. So I have all the uh, ingredients I need to compute the portfolio risk. Now, portfolio risk formula has a number of terms, but there are two different types of terms. One type of terms you, you need to put in the formula are variances. Okay, so let's put the variance of each stock. And according to the formula, we have to multiply them by squared investment weights. Okay, so this is the squared investment weight of Tesla times variance of Tesla returns plus squared weight of Amazon multiplied by the variance of Amazon returns plus a squared weight of Netflix multiplied by the variance of Netflix returns. So this is the first part of the formula, the first group of uh, terms, if you will. Now we also need the covariance terms, okay? So basically, we need to make use of each term that appear in this variance covariance matrix. And the covariance terms will be two times. And you might wonder why it is two, because normally there would be another Amazon Tesla here, which is the same as this. So then we have two of them. Two times the first weight, variance of Tesla, uh, sorry, the weight of Tesla, times the weight of Amazon, times the covariance between two stocks. So this is the first covariance term. We need two more. So we need one term for each covariance. Now I need the weight of Tesla times weight of Netflix times the covariance between Amazon and Netflix. Almost there, the last one, weight of Amazon times weight of Netflix times the covariance between Amazon and Netflix, right? So hopefully I've done everything right. And this is my portfolio variance, okay? So maybe down here, let's call this variance. And typically when we say portfolio risk, we take the square root of this to find uh, 
volatility, volatility or the standard deviation of the return. So I'm going to use the square root function and get a figure like this. So let's format this a bit nicely. So this is my portfolio risk. Okay. So this equally weighted portfolio, these three stocks have a return of 2.92% and a risk of 12.23%. Now, we can also do this a bit quicker by using a small trick. Okay? So these numbers are correct, but I would like to show you a second method, a faster method to get the same figures. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new column and I'm gonna call that my portfolio. And I'm going to compute month by month the returns of this portfolio. So how can I do that? Again, I can use the sum product function. So I've got my investment rates here, right? And this time, I want to fix them because I will extend this downward. So I don't want these uh, rates to, to disappear. I'm going to keep using them. So I hit F4 to fix the cells. Then the second array is, the, of course, the returns of the three stops, right? And this is, again, let's format this nicely. This is the return of the portfolio for uh, the first month in the sample, okay? So this is um, September 2023. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna extend this downwards, okay? So I've got the same number of observations and portfolio returns. So I'm going to compute portfolio return and risk directly from uh, this column, okay? So let's begin with the portfolio return. So if I've done everything correctly, I should get the same figure. So I'm going to use the average function and select the return observations uh, on this column. Let's see. As you can see, we've got exactly the same figure. How about portfolio variance? Now it will be a lot simpler, right? So I can, again, use the var s function and now select the returns here. And as you can see, I get the identical result. And if I get the square root of this, I could also use the standard deviation function, to be honest, but let's stick to the same format. As you can see, maybe format it nicely. As you can see, we've got the same figure. So there you go. You computed the portfolio return and risk using these three stocks and uh, using two different methods. And the nice thing here is I could easily change the weights. So let's say, let's suppose I take Amazon out of this portfolio. Right? So let's make it zero. Now I've got a portfolio of Tesla and Netflix, and the figures have immediately updated. I could just make it remove everything. So let's say, I, let's say I remove Tesla as well. So all the money is on Netflix. Of course, the return is going to be the same as Netflix. And of course, the variance uh, will be the same as the uh, variance of Netflix, right? So these are exactly the same. Let's put this back to our original numbers and wrap up our tutorial here. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial. Like I said, you can go to video description to download, uh, to find the link to download this uh, spreadsheet. Okay, if you have liked the video, please consider us consider giving us a like and subscribe to our channel. And goodbye from us now until uh, the next video.